the initial value or the first iteration, we no longer have to, we're not obligated to find an interval anymore. Uh, and we do not have to use the intermediate value theorem for continuous, func continuous functions. We do not. Because they are giving us the first iteration. So, so our f of x is this function. Our f prime is 6x squared minus 6x. And I'm ready to create the Newton's function. So the function is up here. And the derivative is down here. So when this is negative 1, so this is 6 plus 6. That's OK. 6 plus 6 is not 0, so this is OK. It's legitimate. Good. So now all I have to do is just plug this in. And I'm going to share my screen. I just uh, got my calculator waiting for me here. OK, so in y equals, clear everything. I should have asked to Queen, is that what you want? You wanted us to find, to apply Newton's method, correct? Is that what the problem is asking? Yep, you have to apply Newton's method, and you only have to find to the third iteration. So how many decimal digits? Um, it says value answer to four decimal places. OK, so four decimals. Good. So x minus 2x cubed. Good. Uh, minus 3x squared. And then plus 2. And divide. 6x squared minus 6x. Good. So now I go to second and quit. We go to variables, y variable. So in case you forgot, these steps are in the video. I recorded this last time. So you can review it anytime you want. So I plug in negative 1. I get the first, the second iteration, as they, they like to call it, negative 0.75. And then click, click. I replace negative 1 by the previous answer. Careful to clean it up so it's just A and S. That's it. And press Enter. And then press Enter. And then press Enter. And I'm done. So it converged in. The, so this is x sub 2. No, this is x sub 2. This is x sub 3. Negative 0.68253968.25. And I don't need to copy the last one because I already have four decimal digits. They repeat it. So this is good enough. So x sub 4, negative 0.677675. And that's good enough. And if I need to round it, I will say it's approximately negative 0.677. Seven. I think I copied an extra seven here. Sorry. Six seven seven six seven. Yep. So I'm going to white out one of them. Is this what Tio had in mind? Yep. Good. Perfect. Other questions? Anyone? Anyone else? Um, I have a question. Yes, I'm ready, Abby. So when I was confused how we found the first iteration for when we used the Newton's method. You mean this one was given to us. The problem gave us this. Yeah, but I mean like... Uh, what, if, a, what if we don't have anything? We yeah. are using the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. Exactly what we did in chapter 2 under continuity. We said this is a continuous function because it's a polynomial function. We plugged it in the graphing calculator in y equals. So 
delete, delete, delete. Delete, 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 delete. No, never mind. So it was 2x cubed, 2x cubed, uh, minus 3x squared. So please, if you need to review uh, the intermediate value theorem, it's a very important theorem. What did just happen? I wanted to insert a 3. Why can't I insert a 3 in there? OK, plus 2. So then you go to second and table. It's continuous. And you start anywhere you want. Let's say I'm going to start a negative 2. It's negative. I'm going to continue with negative 1. It's still negative. I'm going to continue with 0. So there is a solution between negative 1 and 0 because the function changes sign. So by IVT, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a 0 between negative 1 and 0. Is that OK? Yes, thank you. So the way we write it, to be exact, so I'm going to write number 1, f of x, that function, is continuous as a poly. That's what we wrote. 2 f of negative 1 is, I don't remember now, negative, and f of 0 is positive. So from 1 and 2, let me just make sure I'm copying correctly. So it was negative and positive. That's correct, yeah. OK, so from 1 and 2, by IVT, there exists a C in the open interval negative 1, 0, such that f of C is 0. such that f of c is 0. So that's why we can either start with uh, negative 1 or start with x equals 0. However, 0 is a problem because that makes that 0. So no, because f prime of 0 is 0. This is OK. Very good questions. Anything else? Have you tried anything else? Do you need help with anything else? So please remember, everything has to be finished by next Monday. Please. Um, I do have three of you who have not done almost anything. And that worries me. You know, worry is my middle name. Please, I'm begging you. And I'm the queen of begging, too. OK. If you need help with anything, please let me know. So the last section that we need to look at, unless you have anything else for me, anyone has anything else? Anyone? You can always stop me if you remember something. So the last section for test three uh, is section 4.7, is another application of differentiation, optimization. This is a huge uh, branch of mathematics, as big as um, algebra, geometry, trig. It's a huge uh, branch, optimization. And of course, it only deals with max min. So what were the applications in, in this chapter? Graphing, with all those details, optimization, Newton's method, and those two little theorems. That's it. That's the entire chapter, basically three plus a little topic, right? Right? Three big topics plus a little one. So there is nothing I have to say here. We're going to look at problems, word problems, and find their maximum. That's it. We have to create a function sometimes. Sometimes we are given the function. So I'm going to share and go to the ebook. Here it is, the ebook, and 4.7. And we'll work on optimization till you say enough is enough. And that's it for test three.
something similar to related rates from the previous chapter, but no, it's not the same. But the same idea, applications. Now, for example, something like this is basically a problem for algebra students. It's not a problem for calculus students. I mean, this is just a quadratic function. You don't even need calculus for it. So let's look at something more interesting. OK, so let's see this, for example, this is easy because we are given the function. So let's read it if we are interested in it, and we'll start with it. The rate in milligram carbon per cubic meter per hour at which photosynthesis takes place for a species of phytoplankton okay, is modeled by the function. So this should be correct, P of T, blah, blah, blah where I is the light intensity measured in thousands of foot candles. For what light intensity P is a maximum? For, so in other words, for what I, for what light intensity I, is P a maximum? If we are interested, we can start with it. We are not, we move on. Is that a yes? Is that a no? Just say yes, ma'am. You said yes, Victoria? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. So we start, oh, that's not a good color. So we start with 10. So we are given the function P of I, 100I over I squared plus I plus 4. Okay. So we're asked to find I that gives or makes P a maximum. This is what we learn in this chapter. How do I start? Do you find the derivative? Thank you so much, of course. So we have to find P prime of I. Remember, this is a constant. If I have here plus 3, I cannot do what I'm going to do. But it's a constant. I don't want to involve that constant because it's just a simple factor outside. So what I'm really saying is that I would like you to always inspect the function. Inspect the function and say, oh, OK. Always try to make your life easier because these calculations can be involving. I don't want to involve 100 if it's a simple constant that is a factor, a factor outside. So it will it will wait patiently. Top prime we because it's say it again. We can't see your screen. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. So let me start again. So when you look at a function before you even attempt to do anything, please inspect this function. And realize that a hundred is just a factor outside. Okay, because this is multiplied and there is nothing else that follows here. So 100 times i over this. So leave the 100 outside, quotient rule. The top function prime is 1. So i squared plus i plus 4 minus the top and parentheses the denominator prime, which is 2i plus 1. Of course, over this squared. Is this okay so far? Are we OK with this? Thank you. So just remember, because with all these devices in front of me, I may not see the screen all the time. Good. Thank you. So then, remember, don't try to simplify. You cannot simplify this with this, because this is a term, or these are three terms in a chain of terms, right? So you don't ever attempt to do this before you factor. If you factor, yes, you can simplify, but not right now. 
So i squared plus i plus 4 minus 2i squared minus i over i squared plus i plus 4, everything squared. Well, I'm hoping that something goes away. So then the 100 stays outside, and negative 2i squared plus i squared is negative i squared and plus 4. And yes, do not forget the denominator. I've seen it in some papers. Um, students just differentiate the top and they forget about the denominator. And they continue without the denominator. Please don't continue without the denominator. We are using the quotient rule. We can't drop anything here. OK, see, I need my props. So i squared plus i plus 4, everything squared. Of course, I'm going to factor out negative 1. And the top becomes i squared minus 4. Can anyone tell us how to factor that? See, even if it's not such a big situation or difficult, cumbersome, this would have made it more difficult. So noticing that 100 can stay outside still makes the calculations much easier. So, oops, so am I on page? Yeah, I'm on page two. Sorry about that. So, can anyone factor the numerator for us? I managed to add two. Thank you so much. So, after we found, it took me a few minutes, right, to find the uh, derivative of this function. What do I need to find next? I have the derivative. I, I pre prepped it so it's already factored. What am I doing next? You said it equal to zero. Very good. So two things. So p prime of i could be undefined, and p prime of i could be zero. So this is for critical numbers for critical number. So please never drop the other one. Because you may drop it and when then one time it will pop up and you forget about it. So first I'm going to put this in the graphing calculator. I shouldn't. I should just determine the discriminant. But let me refresh your memory how to do this. So go to apps. So can I clear everything here? Okay, so go to apps, and we you want 9, and yes, and yes is 2, yes, and I want um, 1, and I want 1, and I want 4. I don't expect this to have any real solutions. But let's see. Ah, of course. So it's all positive. Nice. So I'm going to say none, none. This is never zero. It's always a positive number. Good, so from pre prime equals zero, what will you say? That's why I prepped the function by factoring the top. So what will I say? I equals two and I equals negative two. Two and negative two. There is no light intensity of negative, right? So the only light intensity is 2. So I don't know what this gives. I have to show anyway. So here's my i. Here's my p prime of i. And of course, p of i. So 0, I don't know. Of course, not infinity. So I have 2 and I have 0, and I need to study the sign left and right. So here's the, here's the um, uh, first derivative. No one will ever touch this, because this is, these are all positive for the sign. So let's plug in i0 and give me the sign here. And let's plug in i10 and give me the sign here. Yes, you can put that in the graphing calculator and you can use it, but why? It's so easy. 
It's up to you, though. So 0 plus 2, 0 minus 2 with a minus in front. So what should this be? Negative 4. So uh, it's positive, right? So this is negative 2 times negative. Oh, yeah, 4. Or Yes, good. And now let's plug in 10. This is positive, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive, but there is a negative in front. So what will be the sign to the right of 2? Good. So then this is typical for a maximum. Now if I want to find the maximum, I have to plug in 2 in the function. So let's see, p of 2 is... 200 over 4 plus 4, 8 plus 2, 10. So this is 20. And now I have to dig deep those measurement units. 